Mm-hmm. I'm just going to give Arthur, I'm going to give you permission to record. So try to talk again. Uh, Rabbi Khan, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? It's not working. Sorry, my speaker's not working. No problem. Hi uh, guys, can you all hear me? Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not, I'm sure, but now they look Okay. Right. What what duff did you guys get up to? We finished the 35th duff. We hit uh, 36A1. Yeah, okay. Where it finishes oh, the third chapter. Okay, that's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. So that is a, a, a awesome, awesome achievement. So I want I wanted to share with you an idea. Okay. Uh, it's it's then, then something that you've seen. So it's on Daf Lamed. Okay. On Daf Lamed, Daf, Daf 30, 30A. Okay. Okay. So, so, um, so you've got over there just before on, on, on 30A, just before the new Mishnah, in the middle of, just down past the middle of the page, you've got a, you've got a statement over there. Called this. Sorry, this one sec. Okay. All right. Uh, on the thir- on the thirty a Baba Kama thirty a Lamed Amaladov, you've got a uh, a brisa that says over there, Ton Rabbonon Chasidim Arishonim the early tzaddikim Hayu Matznim. That the, the pious early ones, they used to hide their thorns and their pieces of glass in their fields. And they used to put a three tvochim deep. That it shouldn't be caught by the plow, because the general principle is that a plow would plow three tvochim deep, which is around 30 centimeters. So that's what the bride says. Rav Sheshet shadi luhu menura. Rav Sheshet used to burn them in fire, throw them in fire. Rav shadi luhu bediglat. Rav would dispose of them in the diglat, which is a very fast flowing river. And then you have a statement, three statements seemingly. Amar Rav Yehuda says Rav Yehuda, Hi man, the baile mehavi chasido, person who wants to be pious. Lekai mili b'nezikin, he should be cautious to fulfill the injunctions of Nezikin. Rova Ama Mili de Ovis. Rova says matters of Ovis of Pika Ovis, the Amri law, and some say Mili de Brochus, matters of Brochus. So this is a very, very fascinating Gemara. It seems to be very simple. So the person wants to be pious. Person wants to be pious. It's telling you what he needs to do. He needs to be makai mili the 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 nezikin matters of damages, matters of obvious of pika obvious, and matters of brachas. Rabbi, so can, question, can I share the screen with them just to show them where it is? Do you mind, Rabbi? Sure, with God, pleasure. Can you see the screen? You remember this? Yeah. One who okay. wishes to be devout should fulfill the words of tractate nezikin. On the right top part of the page. I'm just going to stop right. it so I can let Rabbi Khan speak. Okay, all right. So we've got now we've got now a person who's, who's who wants to be pious. So, so the first we we we've got a number of questions that uh, that uh, we need to ask over here. It says a person who wants to be pious. Now, why want to be pious? Just, just do what, do the basics. Do the basics. Why, why, why would a person want to be pious? Why don't you just say do the basics? You know, that that makes sense, right? Right? Why, why do more than you need? It's like you know, why drive a Merc when you can manage by walking? 
Né? Not so? So why, why, so why be pious? Why be pious? Right? Have you, got, you guys got a decent answer of why to be pious? The Gemara is taking it on as a given that a person would want to be pious. And, 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 and your, first, your first impression was that, you know, why bother? Right? And I'm telling you that the Gemara takes it on, that this would be, this would be a, a healthy aspiration. Why so? Why is this a basic aspiration to want to be pious? You never thought about yourself in that way. I think uh, I can't speak for the other guys, but to me, when I read Misilach Shorim, I just thought this is beyond me. And I just want to kind of refrain from uh, Averot and uh, and I, I've never thought of such a lovely, lofty level as piousness, just trying to do the least amount of damage. Okay, so doing the least amount of damage, that's merely the Nazikin over here, that's what we're talking about. So maybe you do want to be pious. But but again, why, why, again, we can see that the Gemara takes as a premise that a person would want to be pious. So that's my challenge and my question to you. Why would, is that a, obvious that a person needs to want to be pious? I would say it's built into us. Why? What's built in? Why? You're right. So again, the fact that the Gemara takes it well, as a given means it must be built into a, a healthy a healthy person. A healthy Yid wants to be pious. As the, Ramchal, as the Ramchal says that our souls automatically have this craving to cleave to Hashem. Mm -hmm. And the more we emulate Him, the more we have in common in terms of a relationship of being givers, not takers. And then we earn our reward instead of being giving a shameful gift that we haven't worked towards and that we understand what it's like to be the creator in a certain sense and create and give to others to the limited capacity at which we have the opportunity to do so within a short time of earth in order to build the best relationship we can with Hashem for eternity. Okay, that's, 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 that's a very nice idea. So what you essentially, in, in essence, what you're saying is that man is created, B'Tselem Elohim, man is created with the capacity to emulate, to be God-like. To be God-like. Yeah. All right, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to come back to the question, but let's just understand again, what does it mean to be pious? <coughs> what does it mean to be pious? To be a chosid. Piety, piety is going beyond the basics of what's expected. That's what piety means. Right? So, so the basics might be that you can walk to work. The, the extra would be that you're going to ride a bike or a motorbike or a car. You're going beyond the basics. Beyond the basics. Now, the basics are there because that's applicable and, 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 and attainable by everybody. But piety means that this is the right thing to be doing, but it's not set as a demand. There are certain things that are set as demands. And, and, uh, and uh, those things essentially make up Shulchan Aruch. When you see the parameters of the halacha, the parameters of the halacha are defining what's the basic mode of behavior. Those are the basics. That's, that's, that's essentially what is demanded from each and every year. That's the basics in aloha. Piety is what's beyond that, but it's still rots on Hashem. It, 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 it is Hashem's will, it's Hashem's desire that this be done. So we know, we're now getting a little bit closer, tying, in, tying into what you said, Damon, that if we know that we're created in the image of Hashem, if we are created to emulate Hashem, we want to be more like Hashem, which means we want to do things that are, are an expression and a fulfillment of Hashem's will over and above the basic demands made upon us. In other words, we're not doing it because we have to. We're doing it because we want to. We want to be more godlike. So this is the first point, that a person wants to, he, he, he has a desire to be pious. And what we're told is that piety um, it manifests 
in three basic areas. The one is mili denizikin. So mili denizikin means matters of damages. So what, what's, what's uh, there, there are a whole number of damages as you've seen already. So you can, you, we know that you can damage a person's property. You can damage a person's body. We've also saw, seen uh, the idea, uh, maybe I think you've seen the idea of boishas. You can damage a person's reputation. You can embarrass them. You can embarrass them. Right? There, uh, you can cause a people mental anguish. There's all different types of damages that you can cause to people. So it says a person's got to be careful of matters of nizikin. When we learn matters of nizikin, what we're learning is we're learning how not to cause damage to people. In other words, if you learn in Baba Kama that your asset, your bull can cause damage there, and that's the end, and, and it's not just that you're held liable for it. The fact is that your bull can could cause damage, so therefore be very careful about it. Don't pour water in the Rosh's Rabbim. Don't spit. Don't do. We see, we see all types of things that even if you might have permission to do them, you're still going to be liable. There are things that you're liable that the Beisden is going to extract from you. And there are things that you're liable that the Beisden is not going to extract from you. But you know that in order to be Yoytze Bidei Shemaim, in order to fall from, from the hands of heaven, you have to do it. You have to do it. So, so the mini Dinaziking are giving you a whole uh, framework of how to relate ben Adam between yourself and other people. There's a whole framework. So if you want to be pious, be very cautious in your relationships with other people. Be cautious not to cause any damage. You always, whenever you think, whenever you're going to do something that is going to be an interaction or will impact upon somebody else, think to yourself, is this going to cause any, any damage? If it's going to cause any damage, you need to be very, very careful about from this. Right? But you, you, that's your first thought. Is this going to, and then we said, it can be financial, physical, emotional damage, anything. Damage to reputation. Is this going to cause damage? And you stay away from things that cause damage to other people. The next one is mili de ovis. Matters of pirka ovis. So I, I want to come back to this because it'll be easier to understand after I explain the next one. The third one is matters of brochas. So what are brochas? Brochas is a relationship between me and Hashem, between man and God. So be cautious, be cautious to fulfill all the things that are between you and Hashem. And there are lots of things. There are lots of things that are between you and Hashem. One of the most basic, one of the most basic things that's between you and Hashem is recognizing Hashem. When we say a brocha, right, unfortunately, we, you know, especially, you know, growing up as Balei Tshuva, so what happens is, is, uh, okay, you, you, you go to your first shear about brochas, and it's all very exciting. You say, you know what? You know, before you benefit from this world, say thanks to God. That sounds like a good idea. Okay, uh, Hashem is uh, the creator of the world, and He made anything, everything. So obviously, I need to say thank you. Okay, so that was the first. That was the first nice, inspirational idea about brochas. And then you carry on learning about brochas. And so, okay, you know, all right, this is the things I need to say. Sheikh Kol, and this is a Berei Pri Adam, and this is Berei Pri Eitz, and this is Mazoinus. And what after brocha you're going to say? And and then what? Bro, then the whole thing goes in davening, and this is what you're going to daven. And this is how you say Shemona Esrei. And you put your hands over your eyes when you say Shema. And this is where you bow. And this is where you three steps forward, three steps back. You get involved in the whole technicality. And uh, sadly, what often happens is we lose the fact that brochas is a paradigm of talking to Hashem, recognizing Hashem and talking to Hashem. Hey, how many times, right? Uh, you know, you can say to somebody, say, did you daven this morning? I'll say, of, of course I davened. And you say, did you talk to Hashem? And then that's not such an obvious answer. You know, do, do you really think 
that when you done this morning, did it feel like you were talking to Hashem? So I, sometimes we get lost in it. Uh, there's a nice example. I don't know if I've given it in this forum, but uh, okay. Um, so so let's say, you, right, just you'll just imagine. I'm, I'm instead of typing it, you have three words. First word B U Y. Second word A. Third word D O N K E Y. Now you got those three words. Right, what are they? I don't think. Okay, I don't right. Right, okay, all right. Okay, right. Now, what do they mean? Thank you, Afrikaans. <laughs> Thank you very much. No. Excuse me. <laughs> no, 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 no. What do those three words mean? What do those three words mean? Thank you very much. Those words do An not mean thank you very much. An order. You know, Go, go look in a dictionary. Buy means purchase. Uh, a is a conjunctive word, and donkey is a mammal with gray and long ears. Okay, all right. It goes so E-O. Okay. No, it's not literal. Those are what those words mean. They sound the same as an Afrikaans phrase, buy a donkey, which means thank you very much. Okay. It sounds the same. But those three words mean purchase a, you know, gray long-eared mammal that goes e or okay all right so now so 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 now do we understand that if if somebody let's say he comes into a, an environment an african speaking environment and he hears that phrase buy a donkey and, and he doesn't know but he, and he just interprets it in terms of his paradigm it means purchase a purchase an ass and he understands, listen, this is this is their minog. You know, if somebody does something, if somebody gives it, you, you give them, you give them a brocha, you give them an instruction, you know. Because listen, let's face it, Buro agricultural background, and maybe that's the way it works. So if you have a person who's communicating and he believes that the words he's saying are purchase an ass, right? Can we say that this person has expressed gratitude, has said thank you? No. No. Okay. So so um so now let me ask a question. Did you dive in this morning? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, you said the words and it sounded right. Were you communicating? Were you expressing gratitude? Mm. Yeah, actually I'm grateful that the missiles never hit me, so yeah. <laughs> Okay, you're grateful that the Messiah is not it. Yeah, but, but what we say is now, Mili de Brochus. Mili de Brochus means a person needs to be careful in his relationship with Hashem. He needs to have that. He needs to communicate. You need to talk. So when you're saying Brochus, when you're davening, right, you, need to, you need to make a, a plan to make sure that you know what you're saying. It means what you mean. If you don't, the, the, the essence of communication is not what the words sound like. The essence of communication is what meaning are you trying to convey? And so too with brochas and with davening. What meaning are you trying to convey? So that we've discussed. Nezikin is between me and other people. Brochas is between me and Hashem. What's our voice? What's our voice? What's left? Me and myself. Me and myself. Me and myself. Right. So the, the Maharal explains the whole idea of Musa, the whole idea of Musa, the, 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 grammatically, the root word of Musa is Yasar, Yud Samach Resh. Yasar. Now Yasar is associated with a similar Hebrew word, Asar, Aleph Samach Resh. Now Aleph Samach Resh means to constrain. Like you say in the morning, Matir Asurim, he releases the bound. Right? A prison is called a Beta Asurim, a house of those who are bound. Yasar, he says, is to constrain something in a conceptual sense. So Musa basically is developing self control. 
Musa is developing self-control. That's what it's about. And those are all the topics of Pirke Ovis. The whole topic of Pirke Ovis is understanding, understanding what a human being is about and developing the self-control to develop into such a human being. That's what Musa is all about. So we've got these three areas over here. Mili de chasida, mili de zikin, mili de obus, mili de brachas. And as we say, to be a chosid means to go beyond the letter of the law. Now you can only be, go beyond the letter of the law. It's a mission in Pirk Ovis that an Amaaretz cannot be a chosid. A, a, an ignorant individual cannot be a chosid. Why can't he be a chosid? Because he doesn't even know what the basics are. So how can he go beyond the basics? So what we again, we are now coming up to Chag HaShavuz. Chag HaShavuz is Kabbalah Satayra. Hashem's giving us the Torah. But the question is, how much are we going to take? How much are we going to receive? So this is what it's about. The, this, this, this Yom Tif. This Yom Tif. We go into the Yom Tif with a Simcha. And you, can, you guys, Cain and Ori, you're going into the Yom Tif with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of learning and commitment to learning. Right? And you're now going to be asking Hashem, please Hashem, that was great. More. This is great. I want to become more. I want to become more of a human being. I want to become more of a me. I want to become more of a me. And that's what we're trying to get now in this Yom Tov of Shavuos. So here, this is just a short idea from something that you've learned. We want to go beyond. We want to go beyond of what's just the basics. We're going to go beyond of what's just the basics, and we want to get it, and this is our developing our relation with Hashem, and that relationship with Hashem manifests in our relationship to others, our direct relation to Hashem, and our relationship to ourselves. So I think that's a, that's a nice idea to go into Shavuos, and I must say, I, I'm getting such chizuk out of this whole Chavura. It's awesome. You should go Mikhail and Chayel, and, and uh, you know, you, you, you've, you said you've got 30, 35, whatever. Huh? Yeah, 35, 35 tough. Right. So that, that's a, already a significant a significant uh, move on to, I mean, you're basically a third of the way. A little bit, okay, a little bit under a third, but almost a third of the way through Baba Kama. Sure. So that's awesome. That's awesome. You guys should have a lot of atzloch and brocha. Uh, to you and all of yours, and, and it should really be a Chag Sameach, a big Kabbalah Satayra, and you should go Michael Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Right. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you so and much. Keep well, guys. Keep you well. Too. And have a wonderful right. travel right. out. And please, from all of us, can you send uh, Rebets and Leanne uh, a message of uh, just wishing you and your family, and Mazel Tov for uh, your new addition from my... Uh, my Chavrusa uh, that I had the merit of learning with while he was here briefly he gave me the kindness of his time, which I really appreciated. Okay. Naftali Meir and yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, so Naftali Meir, Naftali Meir's little guy, and and the Yaku Gedalia, the baby girl. Oh wow, I didn't um, know. Yeah, just as uh, just like me. Okay. Well, thank you, yeah. uh, thank you, Rabbi Khan. I just wanted to also. Thank you, because you see what we feel like sometimes because our learning has been very detailed and not that broad is we like chopping at parts of a tree. And sometimes we don't see the overall context. So we need to contact you. You on occasion, we try and bother you as little as possible because you, oh, you've, got, you've got the the you've got the chopper that can see the uh, broader forest perspective and see where our uh, Questions right in contextual context. Um, we try. We try. So we try. Uh, that, that's that's really the bottom line. Yiddish Yiddishkeit is a team game. Yeah. Yiddishkeit yeah. is a team game. So thank Absolutely. you, thank you, uh, thank you very much. And uh, we learn on every daf. This last daf we learned that if, according to Rabbi Panasan, you get too cute and greedy and you're uncompromising with the other party. You walk away with nothing. So sometimes, I mean, we learn, actually, there's Musa that's learned on every daf if you look for it. And it's not hard to look for. <laughs> so. Okay, wonderful. So thank you. Wonderful. And have a wonderful Shavuot. Guys, thank you for helping me as friends learn better. I really want to thank you uh, very much for being part of the process. I know you, I felt, you might have felt like a drag gene kicking and screaming, but you 
we're all very good sports. I appreciate it very much. I know it hasn't been easy for you guys, really. Um, no, no, but it's been yeah. absolutely worthwhile. And just shout out to Damon for such a great job in teaching us. He's phenomenal. Absolutely. And the preparation that he puts in, the hours of prep that he puts behind the scenes. Well, so trust me, we've asked him these really tough questions. He's pulled his hair out sometimes with us. But... 